Hey guys, welcome back. This is Brown from the BTN HD, and I believe a couple of hours ago I released a quick update on Apple's latest operating system, and that would be Mac OS 10.12, codename Sierra. Uh, I've been getting a lot of thumb downs on that, but no comments. You guys gotta let me know why you're giving me a thumb down. Uh, I finally took the plunge and I upgraded my production laptop to the latest OS. So right now, this is the latest OS. I'm going to show you guys version 10.12 beta. 16A202W is the build number. Uh, for this operating system to work within your laptop or Mac environment or, you know, MacBook environment or whatever, uh, you have to have at least 2009 or 2010 and later uh, hardware for this to work properly for you. The installation is about 5 gigs and it took about I would say between 30 to 28 minutes to finish the installation. Uh, I haven't had any issues with none of my major programs which is a plus. Uh, but a couple of things that I did notice that are a little hiccups and a lot of cool features within a new, new operating system. Now the first new feature that I noticed off the bat is this icon right here. Now Siri is the same concept as your phone if you own an iPhone. So let's click on it. You got two ways to click on it. You either could click on the icon within your dock or you could click on the icon on the top of the taskbar. You could also create a shortcut. Now if you go to your apples and system preferences within here you're going to get yourself a Siri icon. Uh, these are the features that you're going to see. Uh, you're able to switch the language. Uh, Siri voice either American female, American male. You have also the voice feedback, the mic input. I'm using the internal microphone. And you have a keyboard shortcut. Now the keyboard shortcut for me when I configure it to a specific shortcut, it wasn't working for me. When you enable Siri, you're going to get a privacy dialog box stating that a lot of this information is going to be pushed down to the Apple server. They even give you a nice little about Siri and privacy. Read it. Make sure this is what you want because it, first sentence, it tells you off the bat. When you use Siri, the things you say would be recorded and sent to Apple to process your request. One of the cool things I love about series is searching images. So let's open up uh, pages. Where is my pages? I'm going to open up pages. Create a new document within pages. With Siri, one of the cool things I like about it is that when you enable it, search for images of BTN HD. Here are some images of BTN HD I found on the web. Awesome. So what you could do from here is you could drag and drop an image and place it within uh, your mail or your pages app or Evernote, whatever application that you're able to copy and paste an image there, you're good to go, which is awesome. That means I don't have to open up a browser and search and right click and save and drag and drop and all that stuff. I could do everything from here. Uh, you can do other things within uh, series. It's the same concept as your phone, but the only thing is it's within a laptop environment. With the new operating systems, they have tabs. I don't know if you guys remember this. Within the Finder, you're able to do Command T, and it will open up tabs. And as the tabs feature was also introduced within Safari, which is well known for that area with using tabs, but now tabs are used on specific applications such as pages but there's a catch to use tabs within pages um, and as well as the mail app you have to be in full screen so if I do a Apple T you're gonna get the font dialog box when you do the full screen now you're able to go to file new and let's double click a blank and you get a new tab you're probably saying to yourself why didn't you just do that now if I go into if I exit out of full screen and I go to File, New, it's going to open up a new window. So let's double click on the blank and it just open up a new window. So to create a new tab, which allows you to copy and paste over between pages easily, um, you have to be in full screen. The same concept happens within your mail app. Okay, uh, I believe Evernote is um, supposed to have it, Text Edit is supposed to have it, Keynote, Maps, which is also awesome, which I want to show you guys because within Maps, this is a cool feature I like about maps, uh, especially for myself when I'm traveling a lot. 
I like to search different places like restaurants, how to navigate to the airport, to the hotel. And from here, you're able to say if I'm searching from New York, right? And if I do uh, Command T, now I'm able to do LX Airport. I don't know, right? So now I'm able to do all these tabs and navigate with no problem without losing my previous um, search that I did on Maps, which is pretty awesome. That's a cool feature. Now, a cool thing that I noticed within uh, the new operating system is picture to picture. Uh, what do I mean about picture to picture? So I'm going to close up my Maps, and I'm just going to close this up right here. Now, picture to picture is basically I'm working on a document, and I want to watch the, the latest highlights within, you know, a basketball game so not a lot of websites have this enabled the only website that I've seen that has this feature enabled that allows you to pop it out is uh, NBA.com so I'm gonna go inside Safari and I'm going to go into the NBA.com okay okay so I have my video up and running within my NBA.com and I want to watch this video while I'm working so what you could do is this little option right here will allow you to pop it out and then you're able to move it around so I'm going to just minimize this and I am able to play it and still view it so I'm gonna play it real quick and as you see it's playing while I'm typing which is pretty awesome that's cool so that means I'm able to type and use um, this little feature, this picture to picture feature to continue watching my highlights while I'm working with no problem. I think that's a great feature. Now, it doesn't work with YouTube. YouTube hasn't fully uh, pushed out that update to their system as of yet. I did notice when you do full screen in YouTube and then you shrink it back down, it looks like it's going to snap off, but it just snaps back to the player, to the website. It doesn't actually float. Uh, photo has been uh, updated photos so let's click on photos uh, they added a new section of memories I don't have any memories as of yet because I don't really have a lot of photos but eventually when I start populating it with uh, my E3 um, trip most likely my memories are going to be pre-populated here which is awesome uh, one of the cool things I like about the photo app is that it created a places so now that you know when I get older and lose my mind and I have all these pictures within my system I can actually see where these pictures came from which is pretty cool now the photos app has become a little smarter within searching uh, again I don't really have a huge album but most likely when you guys have a lot of albums with a lot of face pictures that stuff is gonna get recognized but for now let's say if I'm typing M uh, it, it, it kinda narrows down like for this is a machine so that's awesome so this is the only thing with machine pictures which is pretty cool uh, it looks like Apple has rebuilt the searching engine within the photo apps to become a little bit more intelligent but it depends on how much uh, photos you have within your album for the search engine to become smarter. I, it's really small for me so it's not really going to work as perfect the way it's supposed to be. Another thing that I notice is when you finish your update or you finish your installation of the new operating system 10.12 uh, Sierra, uh, it's automatically going to start optimizing your hard drive. I, I've been trying to see if there's a a physical feature that you're able to tell it hey do this automatically but the the operating system is gonna do it for you so if you're running low on space it's gonna basically go inside your hard drive scan it it's gonna locate files that you haven't used for a while and then drop it inside your iCloud to save space when I started the installation I had about 52 gigs and then when the optimization finished it gave me about 20 gigs left, which was pretty good. I, I like that feature a lot. I, I like to have more control of it, but hey, if, if, my, if the operating system is going to do all the work for me and save me space, go for it. And that's it, guys. Those are the new features that I've noticed off the bat. There's much, much more, uh, such as if you have an Apple Watch, you're able to auto-lock and unlock your, you know, your laptop. Uh, they have the cross-platform between the iOS and your laptop, uh, meaning if you have an iPhone and you're doing something or you copy and paste something on your laptop, you, you can actually paste it to your iPhone. Uh, so those features I can't really test out because one, I don't have an Apple Watch. Two, 
I'm not going to upgrade my day-to-day -day phone to the latest operating system uh, because that's I, I, I the last time I did that I had a it just broke and a lot of things weren't working I took the chance and I upgraded my production machine because uh, the last time I did it was when El Capitan came out and it was it worked great so far I'm happy about the the upgrade uh, it's working very efficiently uh, I did notice that boot time has slowed down a little bit on me, which kind of sucks. But uh, it's one of those things I could live, I could live with, uh, as long as all my applications are working with no problem. If you guys are testing out the Mac OS 10.12 code name Sierra, leave comments right below. Let me know what you guys found, and uh, I catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.